Grace and peace to you. It is the Tuesday of Holy Week in the middle of a pandemic. Tuesday in the first Holy Week was a busy day. Jesus is uh, teaching and preaching and meeting with disciples all day long. Now, in order to cover it all, we have to read bits and pieces in all four of the Gospels. They're sometimes in harmony and they're sometimes not. Um, the order is jumbled around a little bit, but as near as I can tell, this would be the synthesized order of what happened uh, that day. I call it Teaching Tuesday. Jesus goes to the temple uh, in Jerusalem and there he starts to teach. And as soon as he does, he's confronted uh, the, uh, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders. They want to know, by what authority are you teaching? After all, they're the wise and learned ones. They've studied uh, the Torah. They know all of the commandments. They know all of the ritual and the practices Jesus, who are you without any of that background? And Jesus answers them with a question. And when they can't answer his question, he tells them he won't answer theirs, and it silences them for a while. And then Jesus tells three parables. The first of the two sons, a father asks uh, his first son to go out and do some work, and the son says, no, I'm not going to do it. And so he goes to the second son and asks him if he will do it, and he says, yes, I will do it. But the first son goes and does the work that he said no to, and the second son doesn't do what he said he would do. And Jesus asks, uh, who is doing the Father's will? Of course, it's the first son. It's not what we do with our lips, but what we do with our actions. And Jesus concludes and says, therefore, the tax collectors and the prostitutes will enter the kingdom of God. Then he tells the parable of the uh, murderous tenants. There is an absent uh, master, uh, and while he's gone away, he, he sends servants to uh, guide them and to um, get some of the rewards from the working the farmland. And each time he sends someone, they treat them harshly and beat them up. And finally, uh, the master sends his own beloved son. And when they see him, they say, he's the heir, let's kill him, because then the inheritance will be ours. And they do. But what happens when the master comes? They don't get the inheritance. It's given to others who will bear fruit. And then he tells the parable of the wedding feast. You might remember that one uh, when invitations had been sent out, but in the custom of that uh, era, uh, when the feast was ready, then you sent the notice, we're ready, come. And all of the invited guests couldn't come. And so they send servants out into the street to invite in anyone and everyone to the feast. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the chief priests, the teachers, and the elders, they are angry. And so they come after Jesus with two trick questions. The first proposes that what if a a woman gets married and her husband dies and she marries his brother as is the custom and he dies and uh, she marries another brother and he dies and, and goes on. And it, they say, so in the resurrection, whose wife is she? And Jesus tells them they don't understand resurrection. And then they ask a second uh, trick question. What is the most important of all the commandments, thinking how can he pick one of the ten over the others, 
And Jesus answers quickly to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. And a second like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus then asked them a, a riddle kind of question about uh, ancestry. And then he gets into some pretty harsh teaching. He condemns six particular behaviors. He condemns self-righteousness. It's where we get the phrase, you don't practice what you preach. You do what you do so that you will be noticed. And Jesus said, to be great, you must be a servant. He condemned self-righteousness, and then he condemned false religion. And he begins this series of woes directed at the teachers of the law. And he condemns legalism and calls them blind guides. He condemns injustice. And says, you pay attention to the minutia of the law, and yet you ignore practicing justice, practicing mercy, practicing forgiveness. He says, it's as if you strain out a gnat, but swallow a camel. Jesus goes on to condemn hypocrisy saying you might look pretty on the outside, but on the inside you're full of greed and self-indulgence. And he condemns persecution, and in the process he calls them snakes and a brood of vipers, hearkening back to what his cousin John the Baptist uh, said in the middle of the desert. So this Jesus we see here is not the, uh, the kind, sweet, uh, gentle Jesus that we often call to mind when we think of Jesus loving and forgiving. This was Jesus on Tuesday speaking truth to power. And as they're there in the temple, they see a poor woman come in and he watches as she goes over to the temple treasury and she puts in two small copper coins worth maybe a penny. And he says to those gather, this woman has given more than any of you because you give out of your wealth and abundance. She has given everything she has. Jesus and the disciples leave and they head out through the valley and head over uh, to the Mount of Olives. And on the way, Jesus looks back at Jerusalem and laments. And he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how I have longed to gather your children together like a hen gathers her chicks under the protection of her wing." They go to Gethsemane, and Jesus is there with the disciples, and he has what, what now we call the, uh, the Olivet Discourse, a series of um, predictions and warnings. And so first, Jesus gives this prediction of the destruction of the temple. It's hard to imagine the temple being destroyed if you've been there, the 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 stones of the foundation are taller than a person. This is a massive building. How could it possibly come down? And the disciples want to know when. And Jesus says, it's not for us to know. The angels don't know. The son doesn't know. Only the father knows. But he warns them that there will be false prophets and there will be false Christs. He says, there will be wars and rumors of wars. There will be nation fighting against nation and brother against brother. And in that season, love grows cold. And then he predicts the destruction of the city Jerusalem, not just of the temple, but the whole city. 
and he shares a vision of the Son of Man returning, coming down out of the clouds, and he warns them to be ready. Be ready at any and every moment, because it can come as if two people are in the field and all of a sudden one is taken up in a moment, what has commonly been called the rapture. And then he tells them two more parables. The parable of the talents. You might remember that one. Uh, a man had three servants. To one he gave five talents, uh, some money. And to another he gave two talents. To a third he gave uh, one talent. And then he uh, went away. And when he returned, he asked them back for what he had entrusted to them. And the man who had five talents had doubled it, and so he gave his master ten talents. And the man who had two talents had doubled it and give, gave the master four talents. But the one who received one talent was so worried about disappointing the master or not doing something right that he just buried it. And so when the master returned, all he had was one talent and the master complimented the two servants and said, Well done, good and faithful servant. He's telling us to be ready. To be ready for the master's return, for God's coming. Put your gifts to use. Whatever you have been given, whatever you have, use it for God's purposes and God's will. And then he told the parable of the judgment. The time when they will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep on the right and the goats on the left. And the master compliments the sheep. He says, when I was hungry, you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me water to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was imprisoned, and you visited me. I was sick, and you cared for me. And the goats on the left objected, saying, Well, well Master, we, we never saw you hungry or thirsty or naked and the master said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do unto me. Now notice earlier, Jesus had condemned six behaviors. And now he praises and lifts, lifts up six behaviors. He goes on with the third uh, prediction of the day. He predicts his own crucifixion, and he predicts he will be handed over at the Passover. And this prediction comes, comes with all of the warnings that have gone before it. Be ready. Meanwhile, while this is happening, the priests and the elders are gathered together to plot a way to end Jesus' life, to, uh, to get him out of their hair. And Judas goes and meets them, and he bargains to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And night comes, and Teaching Tuesday of Holy Week comes to an end. There's so much to take in, in Jesus' teaching and his parables and his confrontation. In the notes below the video, I'll put some scripture references that uh, you can read if you want to read uh, some of these stories and passages for yourself. On Tuesday, Jesus speaks truth to power. He speaks truth to us. 
do we live in such a way every day so that if it is our last day, we will be honored to be in God's presence. Jesus invites us to live like he lived, to care for others. Let me close with this reading from Stages on the Way. It was on the Tuesday that he let them have it. If you had been there, you would have thought that a union official was being taken to task by a group of mobsters, or that the chairman of a multinational corporation was being interrogated by left-wing activists posing as shareholders. And they wanted to know why, and they wanted to know how. They were the respectable men, the influential men, the establishment. The questions they ask range from silly schoolgirl speculations about whether you would become a bigamist in heaven if you had married twice on earth, to what was the central rule of civilized behavior? They knew the answers already, or so they thought. Otherwise, they would never have asked the questions. And like most of us, they were looking for an argument with no intention of a change of heart. So he flailed them with his tongue. Those who tried to look interested, but never wanted to be committed. And that was on Tuesday. The day when he let them let us have it. Will you pray with me? Oh God, this day, as we travel with you, beside you, to the cross, open our ears to hear your word that it might stir powerfully in our lives. Guide our thinking. Guide our speaking, guide our living, that we might be ready, that every day we might live to your glory and your honor. Oh God, free us from all of the, the burdens of guilt and shame and anything from our past. Free us so that we aren't anchored down and weighed down by what has been, but we are freed to walk into a tomorrow, trusting in your goodness and grace. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who teaches us even, even on the way to the cross. Amen.